Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number four in the Access Control Vulnerabilities module titled User Role Can Be Modified in User Profile. All right, let's get started. This lab has an admin panel at slash admin. It's only accessible to logged in users with a role ID of two. Solve the lab by accessing the admin panel and using it to delete the user Carlos. You can log into your own account using the following credentials. So the target goal over here is to access the admin panel and use it to delete the user Carlos. And the way we're going to access the admin panel is by exploiting a broken access control vulnerability. And my guess is that this parameter over here is user controllable or client controllable. And so we should be able to change it and assign our regular user the role ID of the admin user. Okay, so let's access the lab. And while that loads up, you could see over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp. And so all the requests that are being made by the browser are being intercepted in my Burp proxy right over here. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to log into the account that we were given. The password was Peter, hit login. And if we go to HTTP history over here, you could see it's a post request that is being performed. Let's make that a little bit bigger. So it's to the slash login endpoint, and then it takes in two parameters, the username and the password of the user. I'm gonna highlight this because this will be really useful when we're scripting the exploit. So that's step number one. The next step is to figure out where the broken access control vulnerability is. So if we go to my account over here, it doesn't look like it's taking in any parameters other than the session ID of the user, which is normal. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my account again and see if it takes in any other parameters. And here we go. It takes in an ID parameter with the username of the user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to repeater and see if this is the vulnerable parameter. Again, let's make this a little bit bigger. So you could see over here, it's a get request. It takes in the username of the user. So what I'm going to do actually is just hit send. And since this is just a regular user, there's no admin panel over here. So if we look for admin, we get zero matches. The next thing that I'm gonna do is see if I could access, let's see, the admin ID if one exists. Hit send and you get a 302 found. So if we follow redirection over here and it still doesn't have the admin panel. So my guess is we reached the login page and we did. So you could see over here, it tells you you need to log in with your username and password. So that didn't work. It could be because this is not a real username in the system or because this parameter is really not trusted from the client side. And so if you put in an ID other than the one that is assigned to the session cookie, it will automatically send you to the login page. So just to be sure, I'm just gonna say administrator because that might be a valid username on the system, hit send, and we still get a 302 and it sends me to the login page. So my guess is this parameter is not vulnerable and there is still another parameter in the application that could potentially be vulnerable to broken access control. So if we go back over here, home just leads us to the home page. And then my account leads us to the my account page and then we just have logout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the email address, let's say test.test.ca and click on update email just to see the type of parameters that are sent with this request. So it's a post request and it's sent to this endpoint over here. So my account slash change email. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send this to repeater and just view the request. So the endpoint over here is slash my account slash change email. And if we go down over here, you could see it only takes one parameter and that's the email ID of the user that is tied to this session right over here. So at first glance, it doesn't look like it's vulnerable, but let's hit send to see the response. Now notice over here in the response, you get the username of the user that you want to change the email address. You get the changed email address, you get an API key, so that's interesting. And then you also get a role ID, and you could see over here the role ID of the user that we were given is set to one. Now, we know from the exercise description that the role ID two is the one for the administrator user. So if there's a way to change this role ID to two, I should have admin rights. Now, this is not a parameter that is passed in this request over here, but let's see if the application actually accepts this parameter and if it accepts it let's see if it allows it to be changed from the client side so what we're going to do is we're going to add a comma 
and then we're going to say role ID is equal to 2 and hit send and see if the application accepts it. Okay, perfect. So you can see over here it changed to 2, which means that the application allows the client to change the role ID to whatever the client wants, and that's what the broken access control vulnerability is. So if we reload this page over here, we should see the admin panel because now we have admin privileges, and we do. So we click on admin panel right over here. We hit delete. And here we go. We were able to delete the Carlos user and successfully complete the exercise. So if we go back to proxy over here, the request that was responsible for deleting the Carlos user is this one over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this one as well because it'll be useful when we're scripting the exploit. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by manually exploiting the broken access control vulnerability. Now let's script it. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we first exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.